tell you about, about Globus and, and what we do. Um, so uh, Globus delivering data management, as we said, uh, one quite inter uh, interesting distinction is that we deliver to, the, to your storage services uh, systems that you have access to. So institutions that have storage, uh, we integrate with them. Um, uh, we have management capabilities that are in the cloud, so it's a SaaS, but the management part's in the SaaS, but the storage is at the facility, and we inter interface with that, and we'll show you what that's all about. Um, maybe just as a show of hands, I mean, who knows about Globus? Who has heard about Globus? So third, maybe, um, and who is who knows about who's developed something with Clovis? Who's used, okay, one, CLI, the APIs, okay. All right, so very few. Um, okay, but you probably will be seeing it in the future. Right, as a researcher, as a scientist, I need to just easily move data where it needs to go, right? I've got laptops, I have access at Exceed or supercomputing facilities, uh, you know, your lab server, and so you need to get your data from place to place. So how do you do that? Uh, with one interface that kind of gets, puts it all together. We interface to all of these machines um, that you have access to in order to transfer back and forth. I mean, maybe another question is who's used like SCP? So, okay, right, so SCP, you're gonna, you have lots of data, what are you gonna do? You're gonna script it, throw into a script, monitor it, manage it, it's just tedious. You know, why should you have to do that? If you're a researcher and you're dealing with data, you shouldn't have to deal with anything like that, so SAS, is about taking the tedious things that you have to do day to day and just make it easy, right? You come to Facebook, you come to uh, Netflix, you come to all these things, it just click, 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 things just work, right? So HPC isn't always like that. It's challenging to make it like that. And that's what we've tried to do with Globus is to make it uh, to that level. So then additionally, you've got instruments. As a scientist, you've got some high-end instruments that generate significant amounts of data. So, you know, sometimes they have a cache that they can hold this data for some short period of time, but um, you've got to get it off and onto your computing facilities or analysis facilities, wherever it needs to go. You know, it's, uh, astronomy and some of these instruments are in Chile, up some mountain, and needs to get, you know, sent to places throughout the world. So how does that get done? So many will turn to Globus to make that happen. You know, APS does that. Uh, Next-gen sequencing, um, just a few examples. And also like your teams, you know, your collaboration. So now you collaborate more and more, you're collaborating with researchers from different institutions collaborating together. It's not all from University of Michigan. Uh, you know, it's from various institutions and how do you effectively do your collaboration and share your data amongst your team? So, um, Maybe traditionally you'd get an account at these various institutions and you just over Unix permissions and you'd, you'd have to get three and four accounts at various places. But that's unnecessary or another tedious thing that maybe you don't have to do. Uh, with Globus, we provide some sharing capability that we call, which is you know, someone can share from their institution with their collaborators without them having to get accounts at their institution. So I, I can show you and tell you a little bit more about that, but that's kind of another challenge we're trying to take away uh, to make it easy for uh, researchers. Part of the challenges too is, is, is to do, you know, as you're researching and you've got your data, you could daisy chain a bunch of uh, external hard drives together and that's quite reliable, right? Why would just add another one, add, a, add another one and you just keep going on and then before you know it, you don't know what kind of the mess you've, you've built. So, so we um, want to try to take that away and make it so that you can interface, you know, if you do want to do that as initial, you can do that fine and we can interface with that, but we also interface with you know, other uh, storage systems, um, as I pointed out, uh, and make that easy and to try to drive this uh, comparison and cost down to make it so that, so that these, these other techniques can be done to uh, store your data in a more sane, secure, safe way. And another capability we do, uh, service we have is, is publication. So in the end, if I've read, got a paper and more and more, there is this push to save your data sets and, and make them known with your papers, right? So that somebody else can reproduce your uh, analysis. And so 
uh, this is kind of uh, getting more and more the mandate that this is a requirement. Uh, it's not quite there yet, but it's happening, and it will be a requirement in the near future. So um, to us for Globus, as we help you move your data from place to place, we're gonna, we also have a service to, to allow you to publish your data set, to get a, get a DOI, get an object identifier with your data to then use in your publications. Um, so uh, we're doing that as well. And we also want to make it so that your active research can, can share your data very easily as well. Uh, Globus, um, in the end, is, is this uh, cloud box here. This is running you know, in Amazon is where we, we operate our service. And then, as I said, like these data, your endpoints. So these endpoints would be what's running at ALCF, you know, OLCF, uh, NERSC, uh, Exceed, these endpoints. So we, the management's here, the user will send a request to us and we'll give them a browse interface, I'll show you, and then pick your data that you're looking to move and you just highlight and underneath your directory might be a, you know, thousands of directories, millions of files, and you say, I want to move it from this one place to the other. Click, send it to Globus, we keep track, we monitor. In the end, the network has burps, right? You're going to get, you're going to have unreliability and, and we'll restart and keep your, keep your, your data moving and transferred. So that's what we do in a nutshell. Um, you know, it's, it's a nice fire and forget interface, fault recovery, we do that. Security, um, we integrate with campus security and institution security. And then we kind of don't make this a one size monolithic service that uh, we provide APIs at all levels so that anybody can jump in. It's a platform, anybody can jump in at the place that they want to, to integrate their system with Globus. And here's an example of how we interface with various storage connectors on the back end. So you've got your various file systems coming out uh, and, and like tape archives, HPSS, you know, Hadoop, S3. So we interface with all these Google Drive. Um, some uh, institutions have like, you know, unlimited access to Google Drive, but great. Now their users can push their data to Google Drive. Go ahead and do it. But does everybody have to figure out how to do that? But we, we interface to it, so our basic Globus interface will just allow users to just transfer their data easily to Google Drive. It's just another endpoint that they have available to them as we talk about endpoints that, that we operate against. And I guess the other thing is standard versus premium. So we are a, a freemium model. Uh, we're, we're doing a subscription to, uh, to make us sustainable. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Maybe we'll get right into some demonstration here. So here's our homepage. I guess here's what we've moved. So we have a running counter. We've moved 179 petabytes over uh, I don't know, a few years. Um, so here we log in. Log in with your institution. Um, so I'll log. I'll find the University of Chicago. So we integrate with. Uh, uh, Hello. So there I went out to the University of Chicago um, Chibolith server and logged in. And here I am. So now I'm logged in. And, and another feature we do that I'm not going to talk too much about here, but we've recently um, added Globus Auth. So to make it very easy for portals and, and users to manage their sets of credentials. So here you can see I've got uh, a Globus ID account, which is kind of like, well, we used to have Globus username and passwords. We moved that off to a separate service, which is Globus ID. And I've, and in order to make it just like any other um, identity provider. And I've also got my University of Chicago um, identity linked all together into one uh, identi identity set. Um, and so Globus manages identity sets for you to make it so that you can uh, use any one of those. So if I, if I come out to Globus Transfer, so here's where we find endpoints. So maybe uh, endpoints I recently used. So, so University of Chicago has a, a Midway endpoint uh, facility, and I can log in there. Actually, I was previously logged in, so I just, it just fired it right up. And NERSC, I have access to. And here, so now I've got, basically, here's your interface to uh, your systems, a nice, you know, click, uh, SC1501-1, you know, there. I click that and move it. 
I can't actually remember what's all underneath that, but um, I, now it'll just work. Globus will transfer that, and it could be ridiculous amounts of, of, of data. Maybe I'll get a sense here. Uh, here it's going, transfer started. So what Globus will do is first it'll walk your directory, kind of get an entire listing of everything that's underneath there, and just chug away. And behind the scenes, if, it's, if you have a large pipe uh, between, like, say, the leadership compu computing, computing facilities, um, we'll take advantage of that. You know, at both ends, they've got multiple grid FTP servers in this case, uh, you know, on, on multiple nodes. And we can take advantage of, you know, the high throughput uh, over that pipe. So I guess that completed, you know, and then you can have all kinds of stats on this transfer. You know, it says, okay, I moved a gigabyte, um, effective speed, succeeded, you know, directories, files, and you get all kinds of, the, you know, information about your transfers that, uh, again, all this information is as well accessible through our APIs. So everything you see here that the web interface does, you could actually simulate this entire web interface yourself if you wanted to, because our REST APIs are available through to just implement on top of. Let's see. So what else? Uh, so then, let's see if I can scroll down here. Right. Okay. So then, on transfers, one thing that's we have these transfer settings. So basically, on the transfer, the one thing that's that's selected by default is verify file integrity after transfer. So we are going to check some all your files, uh, and then once they're moved, confirm that your checksums match. So actually, I just did that in the transfer I just did. So. Again, you know, do you want to do that by yourself? You want to SCP? You want to do a checksum? You want to confirm, you know, compare the checksum? No, I don't think you really want to do that, but you have to or you need to because you need to confirm your data gets there reliably. Um, and so we do that for you. Uh, and there's other options here. So if you're familiar with rsync, uh, these, you know, would look familiar that you can sync only transfers new or changed where the checksum is different or File does not, you know, file size is different. Modification time is newer. You know, basic rsync type features are available to you here if you, if you want to get into this level. And again, these checksum levels are available in the APIs. Encryption, encrypt transfer. If you need that level of of integrity, um, security, then you can uh, encrypt your transfers. But it's not on by default because it's a performance hit. Not everybody cares about that. If you care, go ahead and select it. The other thing is, right, so now those were two, two, what about my endpoints? What about my laptop? Let me start that back up. So basically you've got Globus Connect um, personal, is what we call it, which is something that runs on, on a laptop or a desktop. Let's see if I refresh this. Uh, maybe I just got to do it like this again. Okay. so. Here you go. So that's my directory on this machine right here on my laptop. So I can transfer things to and from my laptop very easily through to, to Midway, uh, you know, and get whatever kind of data I need down to my laptop or desktop. Uh, so on on these endpoints that are like at Midway, they're going to, um, it's a grid FTP server underneath and it's going to have some, some ports and things that need to be opened up. But on the Globus Connect Personal, we have it set up in a way that it uh, can, can traverse NAT and get out, and so you can transfer in and out of your laptop, even if I'm at wireless at a conference. Um, and again, like the fire and forget, if I leave that running, you know, I close my lid, start a, start a transfer, close my lid, um, uh, go home, open, my, open the laptop back up, uh, and it'll just start resuming my transfer uh, for me. So. Uh, you know, again, we're just trying to take the tedium away from moving data from place to place. So basically, the web API is there uh, for public use, right? You can you can use it to implement um, whatever you want. In addition to an API, we we have a hosted CLI, command line interface. So admin like to script and 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 go to the command line for the tools, and you can do it, and it can be effective, right? You know, simple loops to do various things. So um, if I SSH to uh, my Clovis Online account, 
Okay, so now I just logged in to this machine running in Amazon. That's gonna, again, I can submit my management tasks for transfer here. Uh, so um, if I do a man, you can get a sense of the types of commands that we have. So it's like the things you would think of when you're trying to do actions against an endpoint, right? So I need to list my endpoints. I need to list, I need to activate my endpoints. I want to maybe create an endpoint, modify one. So all the things, uh, bookmarks, I can show you those in a, in a moment. But then basically do an LS is kind of your key commands there, LS and transfer. Um, you know, are the basic things. So status, as you can uh, submit a transfer and wait, monitor and wait it, you can then do a status on your transfer and then wait and do a, do whatever actions you want afterwards. So that's all there. So actually, let's see, if I do an LS, uh, like Smarten, uh, let's see, pound, uh, uh, what do I call it, my laptop, Slash tilde slash, what will happen there? Okay, sure enough. So there's another, basically what, it, what you're seeing here as the applications is, what's, is what I've just listed as well, right next to it through the CLI, right? So you have a command line interface available for use. One thing we notice with the command line interface is the hosted command line, people logging in, it's another service it kind of didn't use, it actually didn't use our REST API directly underneath the covers. It was slightly different. And we're like, you know, it could be unreliable if lots and lots of people start using the CLI. What we'd rather have is to kind of move all of that traffic through our REST API. So what we're going towards is, uh, and we're working on it's an alpha, is like a new, a new downloaded, downloadable API, which as uh, software development kit, basically that then just uses our REST API, you know, out, uh, which is, which is a, a better model, more, um, scalable model. Um, so that's, we're working on it. Basically it'll be a one for one, maybe some improvements here, here or there from our, from our current CLI. Okay, so sharing is the other point here that how do I write? How do I share something from my endpoint I have access to, to another user who does not have access to this endpoint, you know? And, how, and so we can allow them to share directly on Midway, which has sharing set up I can go in and like choose a directory and say, how about this, this directory? Um, and I can, here's some drop down here of different options. So now I can create a share or a shared endpoint. Um, and so it's the host path is, you know, on that F SC15, but I can create some uh, SC notes or I don't know what was in there, but let's just call it that. My notes, whoops, let's see. Uh, I don't care about keywords, and I'm gonna create this. So basically what I'm doing is I'm creating essentially an access point out of the space I have access to on Midway for someone. It's kind of like I haven't said who has access or um, set who has access. Uh, so I'll do that now, let's see. I know there's this other Stu Martin guy out there. Let's, let's go look for him. Oh, sure enough, there he is. And let's select him and let's give him access, read access only. I'm not gonna give him right. So add that permission. So your one user can share basically off of their system with another user, even though they don't have access. So then the other feature we do is publication. So with publication, you wanna put your data through a more rigorous uh, curation step and maybe a series of steps where you've got the data is validated, curated, and then approved to put into a data um, archive uh, to be made available, for, you know, associated with papers and, and given an ID. Typical workflow uh, of something like this would be like the researcher uh, is gonna come and collaborate with a group, maybe at Argonne, for material science and he's got his data set that he wants to move into this repository. Uh, he'll, he'll describe his data set that he wants to move in. He'll go and, and assemble his data set, uh, prepare it for, uh, you know, basically create a shared endpoint, uh, move his data all from various locations into this endpoint, and then um, make it available to like a curator. A curator uh, will kind of confirm that the data is good, conforms to everything they need to have it conform to, 
and then move it into that repository. So now that it's in there, other, other users can come in and search and find, you know, do, search various criteria, keywords, find these data sets, and then, you know, transfer them out, move them to where they need to move them to go ahead and, and um, replicate uh, their simulation or build from it or, or collaborate, whatever they want to do. So that's, that's publication. So, so as I mentioned, like platform, here's essentially a diagram of the platform with the building blocks, you know, some of the Globus Toolkit components under, under the covers and identity management, profile management as a building block. So um, you've got various groups, uh, you know, uh, installing Globus, having endpoints, you know, universities, uh, labs, and um, and then other groups, uh, you know, uh, researchers, portals, integrating with the APIs. Exceeds integrated, you know, Globus Genomics is a service that's integrated with transfer. Uh, KBase for login has outsourced all of their login and user profile management to, to Globus. Um, so various groups then plugging in at various uh, parts uh, of the platform. So, uh, you know, what are we trying to do with the platform is to, to help you leverage your applications, uh, Globus services into your applications. You know, so we're trying to figure out how, what we need to do to, to enable that and make it even easier as we move along. And to extend Globus with your own services, you know, right, and basically to kind of like, as we evolve this platform, maybe you build something on the platform and then we can make that available to the community, right? So we're trying to build an ecosystem where, where everything on this platform can be shared with other researchers and built upon. So maybe another good example of this is uh, the uh, NCAR for climate data. So they disperse data to thousands of researchers throughout the world, petabytes of data that they are managing. And over the years, they had done this through HTTP, and that had worked just fine. But then as things evolve, data sets have gotten bigger and bigger. And that starts to fail. You know, WGET scripts are only going to get you so far. When you now have, you know, terabytes or millions of files, again, it goes back to the tedium. Things are going to break, and you need some service like Globus to just make it super easy to do. So what what you know? So what they added and they integrated with our APIs was just to uh, use the Globus transfer service as an option uh, for users to select uh, if they need that kind of level of reliability. Uh, to use that option. So here's Globus by the numbers. Uh, just to give you a sense of it, so we've got thousands of registered users, you know, we've transferred lots of data, lots of files, um, you know, national labs have, in, have, have are running endpoints, um, you know, but there, and there's thousands of endpoints. As you start to think about laptops and all the various places people need to move data, so we have 3,000 active endpoints per month, you know. People, this is being used through, throughout the world. Um, you know, 450 daily users that, that are quite diverse. Um, and then, you know, over like a month, it's like a, you know, 1,000 unique users, you know, two months, 3,000. It's, it's quite a lot. You know, you don't need to, people don't need to move this data every day all, all the time. Some just need to plug in once in a while. So, you, so it's nice that a system like this is there so that when they have their large data they need to move, they can just log in and move it. Um, we've done a good job keeping it up and running reliable. We've had one data transfer that went three months, you know, just to like the level of reliability is just moving, you know, a system was going away, it was an archival, and they wanted to move all the data to another system, you know, and they just were able to say, you know, move it, <laughs> and we just churn through it. <laughs> Here's another view of just kind of like endpoints uh, worldwide, some plots. So the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, you know, they're taking pictures of the sky and mapping it and watching it evolve and looking for all kinds of phenomena. Uh, so Joel uh, Brownstein from uh, Utah is in charge. He's their data uh, archivist. So he needs to move this data off of this instrument uh, to the U Utah where they do their data pipelining and analysis. And so he moves data there. Uh, so this is, isn't for end users, but more of this kind of like backend processing. He's, he's scripted with their 
um, Python scripts that they have and used our CLI to then go ahead and do this nightly to move like, uh, I forget what his numbers were, but anyway, uh, significant amounts of data um, every day. Anne uh, Sorowski, uh, she was a researcher, uh, is a researcher at uh, NCSA and she uses their, their storage there and she does some weather, uh, extreme weather uh, modeling and analysis and she needs to use Exceed. She needs to use uh, Pittsburgh's um, supercomputing center's uh, system. And so she, she's got significant data that needs to be moved place to place. So again, uh, she leverages this, moves 50 terabytes in a month, uh, you know, regularly. It's, it's um, you know, what would she do otherwise? You know, we just don't want her thinking about having to deal with moving data around. So LIGO. Uh, some of you heard about, what was it, February 11th, I believe, was when they uh, announced this discovery. You know, that's significant. You know, Globus plays a part in that, you know, to, to help, uh, you know, these gravitational waves they've discovered or detected. So this is an NSF project. That data is public data that needs to be preserved. And, and they don't know when they're going to discover these things, but they need that data preserved, all of it, because then when it's discovered, they absolutely need it and needed to make it need to disseminate it. So um, they use us and right, uh, move petabytes of their data as somewhat of a resilience, kind of like archive backup to just make sure they don't lose it. All right, Erin Miller, Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. She comes to Argonne maybe for three or four days. She gets her slot at APS to do her analysis and her experiments. She sets up her material, some kind of biomaterial. I'm not even sure what this is. She runs the uh, microtomography there at APS to then take her images. Previously, she would do three or four days of all of this, gather her data, go back, and do her um, reconstruction, her analysis, and she would see, oh, you know, I should have moved it in a different way. I didn't get the results that I thought I wanted, that I wanted, that I thought I was going to get. So we worked with them to um, do somewhat near near time. Um, uh, transfer of their data from APS to PNNL to then maybe turn around some analysis in like, you know, 15, 20 minute time cycle. So that way she could actively adjust her, her experiment and uh, kind of more reliably get the results that, that she wants, that she needs, and not require this long uh, debug uh, cycle, right, that's just inefficient. So we can, so Globus can be used in those ways as well. So here's a little bit about the subscription, just that we have, we're freemium, we have some, some free features, and then we have some premium features. So sharing is a premium feature. Uh, you know, some management console, which is good for admins to easily see what the activity on their endpoints. So a lot of institutions like that um, to help their admin debug and manage their system. So here is, uh, uh, Globus World, uh, we have an annual conference that we host, and you know, we have researchers from around the world come to this. This last one in April, we tend to do it around in April. Uh, we had a developer workshop, which was basically to talk about all of this uh, in more depth with the developers um, and the leaders uh, of the project uh, to, to really hear about it firsthand. And um, one thing we focused on this last time was basically putting out the, the modern research data portal. So as you're setting up these data portals with lots of data, you're trying to disseminate to your users, um, you know, what do you do? How do you build these things? We've implemented like a sample portal in Python. Uh, we have one that we've kind of worked on well as well in Java to give um, uh, those that are building these portals, um, you know, uh, in science gateways, a sense of how you can construct it, a starting point instead of just looking at APIs and things and figuring out how to construct it. Here's a, here's a sample that you can start from. So people really like this. Um, and one result of this is that we are uh, going to various locations um, throughout the year to kind of give these, these, these presentations and these um, workshops uh, hands-on with developers to um, bring it to more people because not everybody can travel to Globus to do these things. Uh, to the Globus World conferences to do so we're coming local to a number of locations to get it out to everyone. Here's just a, a touch on, I don't want to get into too much of the details, but 
it's a good concept to, to understand that, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Science DMZs. This is your web server, right? And basically all your firewall on a campus or an institution, everything comes through here. The problem is a lot of your portals, your data is sitting there too. And if you try to get significant data moved out of your, in, in and out of a portal, that's just a huge bottleneck. This firewall will just kill all performance. So what, what's been evolving more and more is this notion of a science DMZ, this um, demilitarized zone, basically to avoid the, the campus firewall, but to still have security through this separate router switch. And what they then do is they can set up multiple, like, well, you have one endpoint. This is the logical endpoint for Globus, but they can have multiple physical servers underneath, and that's where you're going to get your performance again. So not only do we avoid kind of like just the, you know, standard campus firewall, but we can, but then you can set it up in this, in this smart way to get significant performance in and out of their storage system. So that's, this is kind of part of the, I mean, the portal uh, sample code is like, you know, portal Python code, which is going to still run here. That portal is going to run here, but it's going to know about this science DMZ uh, uh, high performance uh, access. So it'll, it'll know about that and use that. And so that's kind of like a little bit of the hardware. And this is more of a depiction of the, of the layers of how it gets constructed. And probably I don't really want to go into detail other than Globus is, is um, helping to set this up uh, or to, to help gateways and researchers uh, do this. So anyway, a couple locations for these workshops uh, coming up. Uh, Berkeley, uh, Connecticut, New Haven at Yale. Uh, one coming in Colorado. Um, so if any of you are interested in that, um, uh, look that up. So uh, maybe that's Globus in a nutshell. If you have any questions, here's some links, globus.org. Uh, and then there's some of the worksheet, uh, work, hands-on exercises that if you uh, I think that was passed around. So if you look that up, you could do uh, basic things with Globus, get an account. Um, you could set up your laptop with Globus Connect Personal, uh, transfer things on and off to wherever you have access. You have access at NERSC and uh, ALCF. So you can already do uh, some transfers to these uh, locations and, and give it a lot of data. See what happens, right? Uh, try to beat it up. <laughs>